Rishi Sunak's been talking tough on Britain's borders, vowing to pull the UK out of the ECHR if that's what it takes to stop the small boats crisis. Now, look, this is technically his strongest warning yet to the meddling European courts. The Prime Minister told The Sun, I believe that border security and controlling illegal migration is more important than our membership of any foreign court. Well, that's interesting, because when Robert Jemrick and Suella Braverman were pushed aside slash resigned, uh, he was saying that that can't be the case because Rwanda will pull out of the deal. But anyway, things change. And with a dismal new poll predicting that 11 cabinet ministers could lose their seats in a landslide Labour victory in the next general election, Sunak needs to come up with some eye-catching policies to woo disillusioned Tory voters. Well, I'm joined now by Reform UK MP Lee Anderson. Lee, I thought that we were told that Rwanda would pull out of the deal if we ignored a foreign call. I mean, this is ridiculous. Do you, do you believe Rishi Sunak now? Well, no, well, no, I don't, uh, Patrick. And yes, we was told that Rwanda would pull out of the deal. I think that was a bit of jiggery pokery by, by number ten when we had the um, a third reading of the Rwanda bill. Look, you know, if it was going to pull out, if government was going to pull out the ECHR, they would have done it by now. Uh, but they won't because I tell you why, Patrick. My honest opinion is, 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 is far too many people, not just in in Parliament but with, within the the Conservative benches, that would not support this move at all. And I'm talking about the One Nation lot. So that the, the Parliament as a whole is, is is out of touch with the British public, as it was during the Brexit debate. Probably three quarters of Parliament would not agree to leaving the ECHR. Look, there's a simple solution to this, Patrick. Just ignore it. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm just getting this in my ear now. Apparently, this is just lying. The Sun are now reporting, Lee, that Rwanda are saying that they won't pull out of the deal now if we leave the ECHR. Well, hang on a minute. This is ridiculous. It, it, they were saying this when you were having your votes. They were saying it when Suella Braverman was in charge. They were saying it when Robert yeah. Jemrick was there. Rishi Sunak was holding it over people like yourselves' heads at that particular moment yeah. in time. Yeah. Uh, this is it, what's going on. It's a circus, Lee. Well, it's ridiculous. And at the time of the vote, Patrick, you know, because you covered that vote uh, on that night, mm. uh, we were told the same thing, that Rwanda would pull out. We were so, there was a, a section of us within the Conservative Party at that time, backbenchers, who thought it was nonsense and we've been proved right. I think it was a little bit of uh, like emotional black, political blackmail, if you like, to, to get the, the bill um, over the line. But not for one minute did we think that Rwanda would pull out of the deal. It was absolute nonsense. Yeah, and the actual practicalities of pulling out of the ECHR, do you think Rishi Sunak has the minerals to do that? I don't think uh, it's, it's... Personally, he may have, Patrick, but I don't think he's got the minerals to deal with the One Nation lot. They outnumber the sensible people within, within the Conservative Party. Look, I've said it before, I've said it again. You know, if he was serious about getting, um, you know, coming out of the ECHR, he would have kept Suella Braverman in position. She was a, she was a strong advocate of this. Uh, but I don't think I don't think he will do it. Uh, and like I said before, Patrick, we could ignore the ECHR if we wanted to. We've done it mm. before on the votes for prisoners. And I always used to raise this when I was in the Conservative Party with government. You know, if we ignore the EC ECHR, well, you know, what would be the consequences of that? And I was told repeatedly that it would it would affect our standing on the international stage. It would affect our reputation. But I tell you what, our reputation is already tarnished. On the not just the international stage, but the national stage, I'm sick to death of us importing the third world culture over the channel. Some of these people on these boats coming over, Patrick, as you've reported on your show, going to commit horrific crimes. That's my concern, mm. and that's the concern of the British public. Mm. I mean, it also just smacks of him not being particularly good at politics, which is what quite a few people are saying. He had a Home Secretary in Suella Braverman who would have been perfectly fine for us to pull out the ECHR and an Immigration Minister. I've reported on this show, via the former Immigration Minister's own mouth, that the Prime Minister did not want to talk to him about immigration. Both of those people have gone. He's now got a Home Secretary who doesn't want to leave the ECHR and all of a sudden he's coming out and saying that he would happily leave it. That is a big shift and it does smack, I think, potentially, of desperation. But Lee, astonishing new research has found that GPs are having to teach parents how to cook simple meals like potatoes and beans. Now, the news has sparked outrage with campaigners warning that some parents' inability to cook healthy meals is fueling the UK's childhood obesity crisis. And you're the perfect man to talk to about this because you were, in my view, genuinely wrongly ridiculed. Branded 30p Lee. People laughed at you, OK? for raising the yeah. alarm about this issue previously. Well, you've been vindicated now, haven't you? 
Well, I'll tell you what, Patrick, there's no wonder you can't get an appointment at the GP's surgery these days. You're too busy, you know, doing cooking lessons with, with irresponsible parents. Yes, I was right. And, you know, I worked with the food bank for a, a considerable amount of time. We was batch cooking. We, we cooked 150 meals uh, from 50 quid, worked out at 30 pence. When I, when I actually said this in Parliament, I was ridiculed. I was laughed at. I asked every single Labour MP to come and join me in the food bank project to have a go. This was designed to help people. And it's true, Patrick, there are tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people up and down this country that cannot cook a basic meal from scratch, from you know, from, from the ingredients. They just cannot do it. And this is a generational thing. This has come, this is probably third or fourth generation now of people that cannot cook. And obviously then, if they can't cook, they can't pass those skills onto the mm. kids as a result of that, eating junk food, rubbish and, and, and ready meals. And they're, they're teaching them, apparently, they're teaching them how to do things like cook beans, which, with respect, cooking beans is open a tin and either shove it in the microwave or on the hob for about two or three minutes, isn't it really? Let, let's be honest. And what I found fascinatingly was when you said that stuff, a lot of people on the left ridiculed you, didn't they? Then they, 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 yeah. they really stuck the knife into you. But if they were really all about helping people, Lee, they probably would have got on board because these are the kind... We can, we can mock these people if we want, which I certainly don't want to do, or you could try and actually help them, which I think is what you yeah, were really trying to do. Yeah. Trying to, yeah, trying to do something positive, Patrick. I mean, they weren't ridiculing these celebrity chefs, you know, these Jack Monroe's, yeah. these, these Jamie Oliver's, and they, they were cooking meals for 20 pence, considerably cheaper than what... We could prepare them for, and we was actually doing this in, in the food bank I was volunteering at. We was encouraging people when they came for the food parcel to sign up for a cooking course and a budgeting course to try and help people manage their budget. This is this is what we should be doing. This is responsible, Patrick. Okay. Now, look, Lee, I've got to ask you about this. I'm going to be covering this in a bit more detail, or quite a lot more detail next, because next I am going to take our viewers and our listeners live to the Falkland Islands. But Argentina's president, Javier Millet, has promised to set yeah. out a diplomatic roadmap for the UK to hand the Falkland Islands back to the South American country. Lee, would you fight him on the beaches of the Falkland Islands? Uh, well, I'm not sure about that, Patrick. I'm a bit longing to for that. But listen, it, 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 this is, I think he must be in trouble. This is a man, by the way, I was looking at him earlier on, who, who visits a psychic to get, you know, to come up to some of his airbrain schemes. I think he's been talking to his late dead dog as well at some stage. So I, I think, think he's should... cloned his dog, actually, Lee. I think he's got a uh, clone. Yeah, but I take your point. Carry on. It's not just irrelevant, really. Yeah, but it, yeah <laughs> it, 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 probably needs to, yeah, it probably needs to get a grip. You know, you know, the Falklands have been ours for, what, hundreds of years now. I mean, why does he want the island? There's nothing there apart from... You know, a few hundred Brits and a, and a load of penguins. He just, I don't know why he's doing it, to be honest with you, Patrick. You know, we, we lost a lot of lives, nearly 300 men, I think, we lost on there in, in the early 80s. And it, it would be a travesty if we haven't even got into this discussion. So he probably needs to sort the problems out in his own backyard before he starts poking his nose. Well, would we, would we go to war again over them, though? I mean, we do keep hearing a lot about defence cuts, defence spending. We're spread pretty thin. I mean, do you think that, though, that we would go to war to defend the Falkland Islands again? Well, I would hope it wouldn't come to that, Patrick. I hate to see our, our, our young men and women going over to foreign lands to, you know, to risk their lives. But, you know, it is a British colony. There are British people on that island and they deserve our support. And if mm. push comes to shove, we should defend them. All right, one final one to you, Lee. Um, there's been this story about the old um, sex-based honey trap and William Rag has stuck his head above the parapet today. Um, I, I take it you're not worried about being caught in any of this, are you? <laughs> well, I, did, I, did, I heard it on GB earlier on the radio in the car about some uh, people have been sending emails or text messages to, to MPs and then, you know, saying, I met you last week at this do and um, I really like you. And then they've been sending nude photos. Well, I'm telling you what now, if anybody falls for that sort of nonsense, then he caught it off to the local funny farm. So we're, we're not going to be seeing any naked pictures of Lee Anderson anytime soon then? I would hope not. It'd be quite distressing, Patrick. All right, Lee, thank you very much. Always a good sport. Take care. All right.